10 years ago, my life was quite a mess. I was feeling quite miserable. I did nothing but play video games. I smoked weed pretty much every day and I ate a lot of unhealthy food. I had no job, I had no education. I lived in my parents' house. I neglected my looks. I got fat and my hair and my beard was very long. To be honest, I think I looked quite awesome, but a lot of people, including women, didn't, <laughs> didn't quite agree with that. I was essentially living the lifestyle of a loser and I actually developed social anxiety because of it. When I was younger, in like my earlier teens, I never had social anxiety. But over time, as I was living this lifestyle, I developed social anxiety to the point where my brother and I would fight over who would have to go to the store because we were afraid to have like a two sentence interaction with the cashier. That, that's genuinely how bad it was. And I was just all around miserable and unhappy with my life. But over the course of these 10 years, I made a lot of changes. I started to lose weight. I started to take care of my body. I started working on my mental health. I started educating myself. I got jobs instead of just playing World of Warcraft all day. I actually started to do something useful right now. I broke my comfort bubble. I leveled up my social skills. I got rejected by women. I learned how to actually interact with women. I got a girlfriend. I love her. We've been together for years now. She's pregnant and we're expecting our first child, my daughter, two weeks, two weeks from now. By the time that you're watching this video, I might already be a dad. And all around, I am happy with my life. I am happy with most of the aspects of my life. I am happy with my life in general, my life as a whole. Now, the point of this video is that I want to share with you guys the most important points that I have learned along the way. This is not just going to be a motivational video, but I'm going to do some reality check-in as well, because I see a lot of people in the NoFab community that seem to have a very unrealistic image of what a NoFab journey is supposed to look like. So in this video, I'm going to share the most important things that I've learned. And I'm really just trying to give you guys uh, a realistic, healthy image of what you can expect when you do NoFab in the long term. Now, I'm not trying to say that it's going to take you 10 years. I'm not trying to say that I've only been happy for the past year, that it took me nine years to get to where I am now. No, I'm just saying that I started to improve myself roughly 10 years ago. And this is what I learned. Number one, it is a journey. You will have ups and downs. You will have relapses. There are people in the NoFab community that have a very unrealistic image of what a 10 year journey should look like. When they see a video like this one, 10 year NoFab transformation, they assume that I am some kind of a god, thanks by the way, but they assume that, that I am some kind of a god that decided to quit porn 10 years ago, that have never watched a dirty video ever since, that slowly along the way I've developed these superpowers, that these superpowers are the sole reason that I improved my life and if I were to relapse right now, I would lose these superpowers and I would have to slowly build them back up over the course of weeks, months, or years. This is the truth. I have relapsed. You are going to relapse, I relapsed, especially in the beginning. If you are used to fapping every day and then you try to quit porn, then it takes a while to unlearn the habit. And it's fine. I mean, think of it like this. If you are trying to lose weight and you're on a diet and you eat a cheat meal once a month, well, it's not perfect, right? You'll get a little kink in the progress, but you are still making progress. It's not like that one single cheat meal is negating all of the progress that you have made the previous month, right? It was the exact same way when it comes to NoFap. The whole point of NoFap is that fapping to porn too often is bad for you because it numbs your dopamine system and it kind of rewires your sexuality and it messes up your confidence, etc. But if you do NoFab, you start watching porn less often, it starts to have less effect on you. See, that that's the thing. It's about watching porn too often and watching it less. If you've been doing NoFab consistently for like a month and then you relapse, so you essentially watch porn once a month, watching that porn once a month is not suddenly going to completely destroy your dopamine system. It's not going to instantly give you a fetish. You know, you watch one kinky video and then, ooh, you're stuck with the fetish. <laughs> no, it's something that develops over time. That's, that's the whole point of NoFap. Watching porn too often is bad for you. Start doing it less often, good for you. 
relapsing every now and then, it only has a small influence to your overall progress. It doesn't mean that all progress is lost. I used to relapse a lot in the beginning. Over time, I started to relapse less and less frequently. And eventually I turned into the person that just doesn't watch porn all the time anymore. If I would relapse right now, it would be fine. I wouldn't freak out about it. I would be like, oh yeah, I watched porn once. So f what? I am the person that is not addicted to porn. I am the person that just doesn't watch porn all the time. That's it. Relapsing, no big deal. Second point, no fat is not the only thing I did. I am not attributing all of the changes that I have made in my life to NoFab alone. NoFab was one of the many factors that I focused on. I kind of already mentioned this one in a previous point. There are people that think that NoFab is this one magical thing that you do and then once you are on NoFab then your life changes. Suddenly you start to get a job and suddenly you start to get fit and women will start to chase you etc. Yes, NoFab is or at least can be extremely important. Watching porn all the time can be the major factor that is destroying your dopamine system. It can give you all kinds of fetishes. It can give you uh, inferiority beliefs. If you're watching cuckold porn all the time, it can mess up your confidence. It can be one of the biggest factors that you have to target if you want to improve your life without a single doubt. But it's never the only factor. Self-improvement is always a holistic thing and you can't just pick one factor and expect that factor to fix your life. 10 years ago, it's not like I decided to go on NoFab and that NoFab inspired me to like do all the other things as well, no. 10 years ago, I decided that I wanted to change my life. I asked myself, what do I need to change? NoFab was one of them. I didn't even knew that it was called no fat back then, but I knew that I had to quit watching porn all the time. That was one of the factors. But losing weight, taking care of my health, getting a job, breaking my comfort bubble, increasing my social skills, learning how to interact with women, these were also factors that I worked on. And if I wouldn't have focused on these factors, I would have not been where I am today because again, Self-improvement is always a holistic thing. You cannot expect to focus on one or two aspects and, and for that to like change the rest of your life. That is not how life works. The next lesson, goals. If you've seen my video that I posted two days ago, you already know what I'm going to say. I have had several phases in my life throughout these 10 years where doing no fab or improving myself in general was either easy for me and I've had phases where it was hard for me. And it, it went up and down. I am not saying that in the, in the beginning it was hard and then it eventually became easy, but I've actually had phases where at first it was easy and then like after that a year later for a full year or something, it was hard for me. It, it fluctuated. I have had ups and downs. But if I look back on these phases, there's one big thing that set them apart goals. During the phases where improving myself was easy, I had big goals. I had strong goals that inspired me to be the best version of myself. I had goals that motivated me to want to improve myself. And then during the phases where improving myself was hard, I sort of lost these goals. I wasn't really in tune with my goals anymore and I felt sort of directionless in life. And it's really that simple if you think about it. If you don't have a strong goal, if you don't have a strong reason to improve yourself, then improving yourself is going to be very hard. I see this pattern all the time. The guys that are successful at doing NoFab, they have bigger goals in life. They have something to work towards, something that inspires them to actually want to improve themselves. The guys who struggle to do NoFab, directionless in life. They have no reason to improve themselves and so their subconscious mind is going to be like, yeah, well, f it. Why would I improve myself if there is no reason to improve myself? Goals, really. It is one of the most important lessons I've ever learned when it comes to NoFab and really just when it comes to self-improvement and life in general. Without goals, there's no reason to improve yourself. Now, the last point that I'm going to make is that you should have the right mindset towards no fab. And that mindset actually means 
don't worry too much about no fab, as ironic as that might sound. Let me try to explain to you with this example. Let's say that you are trying to quit drugs. You are a drug addict, right? You are trying to quit drugs. Who do you want to be 10 years from now? Do you want to be the guy that tells other people, oh, I am trying to quit drugs. I am on no drugs. I am trying not to use drugs too much. Is that who you want to be? Or do you just want to be the person that just doesn't use drugs all the time anymore? The person that doesn't constantly worry about, oh, I should try not to use drugs, but the person that just doesn't use drugs. You used to use a lot of drugs. Now you don't use a lot of drugs anymore. You see, it works the exact same way with NoFab. I don't really worry about being on NoFab right now. I just turn myself into the person that isn't obsessing over porn. And you can do the exact same thing. But so many people make the mistake of being stuck in the wrong mindset because you constantly obsess over NoFab and you constantly tell yourself, oh, I am the guy that's addicted to porn. I should quit watching porn. And because you have that mindset, you essentially trap yourself in a victim mindset because you tell yourself, I should try to quit watching porn. And so you're automatically also telling yourself, well, I am addicted to porn. I am the porn addict that is trying to quit porn. Instead of telling yourself what you really are, because you are not the guy that is trying to quit porn. You are the guy that is quitting porn. You are the guy that is on self-improvement, that is continuously watching less and less porn. I mean, think about it. You're probably watching less porn right now than you did, what, a month, a year ago? You are watching less porn already, right? You are becoming a better version of yourself. You are not the victim that needs to quit watching porn, no. You are the guy on self-improvement that is improving himself. You are already watching less porn than you used to do. Imagine what your life will be one year from now. One year from now, you will probably barely watch any porn at all anymore. It's a mindset difference. Have the right positive self-improvement mindset. Don't view yourself as the victim. One year from now, your life is going to look pretty great. If you really want to, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, your life will be amazing. Again, you are already working on it. It's not something that you eventually achieve at the end, no. It's a journey and you are already on that journey. You are already improving yourself. So keep these things in mind, guys. I really hope that you can learn from the lessons that I learned over the course of 10 years. I didn't have a lot of information back then. So <laughs> I hope that by sharing this information with you, your progress is going to be a little bit faster than it was for me. But, but again, it's not like I only became happy after, t happy after 10 years or something, but still with this information, it probably speeds up your progress I really hope that you guys learned from this. If you liked it, if you like this video, click the share button below and share it with a friend.